there's a passage of scripture that I was reading this past week, and I just felt like that's where God wanted me to preach from today, but I didn't have a message. I mean, I had a chapter, and I had some verses, but I didn't really have a message. And so I, I thought about it yesterday and tried to figure out some way to make this story develop into a three-point and poem message. And, you know, because some folks, if you ain't got your three points in your poem, and it's not a message, you know. But I think every verse in the Bible is a message from God. Uh, yeah. You know, it was a message to the ones he was talking to. And it's a message to us today. And it's a message to those who will come after us. And so whether this fits like a typical message or not, I don't know. But I do think it's a reminder to me. And I think maybe it'll be a reminder to you. Um, and so with that, if you'll go with me to Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. And I want to read two verses to begin with. I apologize for the delay, but sometimes I forget to dial in the people that want to be dialed in who aren't able to make it here. Um, the, I'm not sure what the title is again. I don't usually get hung up on titles because we don't put the title on the sign out front. Is it something like you have everything you need? No, not exactly. It's, uh, you have I mean, exactly. You're not exactly. Have everything. I've got on the top of my paper, you're always looking for a sign. Um, but in verse number 11 of chapter 8, it says, And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him. Seeking of him a sign from heaven, and tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit, and said, Why does this generation seek after a sign? And I'm going to stop right there for now. And in, in, in my opinion, Jesus is kind of exasperated with the Pharisees. If you go back through the book of Mark, you'll find that in chapter 1, when Jesus was being baptized, there was a voice that came out of heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased. There was a dove that came down, and the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down and lit on Jesus' shoulder. There was a leper's cleanse. There was demons cast out. Peter's mother-in-law was healed. Many, many diseases were healed. In chapter 2, we have the guy, the story of the roof being removed and the four guys taking the man to Jesus and Jesus healed him. In chapter 3 we have where Jesus was healing on the Sabbath and the disciples were chosen. In chapter 4 we've got Jesus teaching in, in parables to all of the different congregations there and then he calmed the sea, the stormy sea. In chapter 5 he landed on the, on the shores of the Gadarenes and the demonic there was healed. The lady with the issue of blood was healed. Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead. In chapter 6, the disciples were sent out to preach and John was beheaded and the 5,000 were fed. Jesus walked on the water and then about half the town of the Genesaret were healed. In chapter 7, he began preaching with authority and the daughter was freed from the demonic attacks. The deaf and dumb man was healed. But here, and, and if you go back and you, you look at all of those things, every single one of those stories almost, the Pharisees questioned. The Pharisees sought for a chance to trap him. The Pharisees, the Pharisees, the Pharisees. And, and, and here, Jesus in chapter 8, he's, if you read the first part of that, he's just fed the 4,000. Now, how many of you in your Sunday school ever knew about Jesus feeding the 4,000? Yes. You know, we've heard all about the 5,000. But very few churches teach about feeding the 4,000. You know, and, and so here, not only did he feed 5,000 back in chapter 6, but here again in chapter 8, he fed 4,000 more. There was 12 baskets full left over in the, in the first one. They had one loaf, or five loaves and two fish. And in this one, they had, I think it was 
seven lo or five seven, seven loaves, loaves seven loaves and then there was a bunch of baskets left over after that one and so here the, the Jesus is I believe Jesus is kind of exasperated with the, how many flipping signs do you need how much more sign do you need that I am the Messiah how much more sign how many more miracles can I perform and we have the same situation today people are not interested in the gospel people are more interested in the signs we want to see the paid participants jumping out of the wheelchairs. We want to see the blood coming out of the statue's feet. We want to see tears rolling down a hunk of concrete space. You know, we want to see some signs. You know, we could, we could do a healing line at this church and we have them backed up here to True Value. You know, we could, we could do... And, and I'm not saying that Jesus doesn't heal because I've been there, done that. Jesus has healed people right in front of me. I've prayed for people and they've, they've been healed of their diseases. I've seen people healed of cancer, tumors, and everything else. Not saying that Jesus doesn't do it, but I'm saying he ain't doing it for a show. Yeah. It ain't lining up the wheelchairs and let's run across the stage. It ain't talking into, there's one Peter pop-off. He got caught finally with an earpiece in his ear and his wife was talking to him about people in the audience that needed to be healed. And, you know, there's so much fake that people aren't even believing in the signs anymore. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is kind of here, in my opinion, and he sighed deeply in his spirit. Why is this generation seeking after a sign? He said, I ain't going to give you no more signs. This generation, verse, verse number 12, there shall be no sign given unto this generation. Jesus says, I'm done with you. I'm done proving myself to you. You know, I tell Rose all the time, how many more times do I have to tell you I love you? I take care of your stupid dog. I take care of your car. I take care of your paperwork. I cook for you. I clean. How many more times do I have to show you that I love you? She said, you just tell me. <laughs> you know, her love language is words. Mine's actions. Pray to me, it's words. <laughs> Go sit down. <laughs> but, but it's, but Jesus, in my opinion, Jesus has gotten to the place of where he says, my spirit will not always strive with you. Because he flat out said that a little bit later on. And so he's gotten to the place. Now Jesus does his disciples, his children, a little bit differently. He doesn't say, I'm not going to show you anything else. I'm not going to talk to you anymore. I'm not going to prove myself to you anymore. But he does get a little bit anxious in dealing with his own children. Look at verse number 13. And he left them and entered into a ship again and departed to the other side. Jesus is always going from one side to another. Every time you see him, he's he going from one side to another. He's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And here in verse number 14, now the disciples, the followers, the ones who had been with him ever since chapter 3, the ones who had seen the lame healed, blind healed, demonics free, issues of blood cleansed, dead rape, the ones who had been with him every single step of the journey for the last however many years. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Okay, not a big deal. They're getting in the boat. They've had a busy day. Jesus said, let's go to the other side again. Okay, let's pack up everything, get back in the boat. Let's head out to the other side. The master says, let's roll, let's roll. Jesus says, bump this crowd. I'm going back to the other side. And so they get in the boat, and the disciples forgot to pack a lunch. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. They had a loaf. So somebody did grab a sandwich. <laughs> so Tiff brought the sandwich. Be like Rose going into the movie theater with her big old purse. She's got her bags of popcorn, her juice bucket. Car seat cover. Car seat cover. Yeah, oh, 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 and he charged them, saying, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. What? Jesus, what? We forgot lunch. What are you talking about some leaven? What's Herod got to do with our lunch? Who was it that was persecuting Jesus all through all of these miracles? The leaven of the Pharisees. The, the, the leaven is a picture of sin all the way through the New Testament. Beware of the sin of the Pharisees. What was the sin of the Pharisees? Unbelief. Not believing that Jesus was the Son of God. Not believing that everything that was made was made by Him. Not believing that I and the Father are one. 
not believing that he was he was the bread of life. Beware, Jesus said, don't, don't get caught up in the Pharisee stuff. You, you, you forgot to pack a lunch. Did you forget? Did we forget what? And they reasoned among themselves, it's because we got no bread. Jesus is ticked at us because we forgot lunch. No, that's not it at all. Jesus could care less whether you bring lunch or not. What Jesus is concerned about is that you forgot the last seven and a half chapters. Jesus, Jesus said, what? Do you not remember? Why reason you because you have no bread? Perceive ye not understand? Not understand? Have you had your hearts yet hardened? Are your, your, is your heart still stuck in the pharisaical mindset? Do you still doubt who I am? How many signs do you need? The disciples were with him. There was probably a different group of Pharisees with each one of these occasions. But the same disciples were with him every single one of these miracles. And Jesus says, Duh! Where have you been? Are you still that thick-headed? Having eyes and you see not? Having ears and you hear not? And do you not remember when I break the five loaves among the 5,000? Now, how many baskets full took you up? They said 12. And when the seven among 4,000? Now, there have been theologians say that these are the same stories. It's just they, they transpose them differently. They just wrote them down. No, if it was the same story, then Jesus himself wouldn't have said, remember the 5,000? Mm -hmm. And if you remember on the story of the 5,000, it says 5,000 men. Plus the women and children. This time it says just the 4,000. And this is the only time that all four, all, both events are listed in all four Gospels. Some of the Gospels leave out one or the other of Jesus' miracles or things. This is listed in all of them. Jesus himself says, don't you remember when I done the 5,000 deal? Don't you remember when we did the 4,000 deal? What do you mean you got no bread? One time you had 12 basketfuls left over with just five loaves. Next time you had, what was it, seven basketfuls left over. Why are you worried about a lunch? Why are you worried about bread for your stomach when you have the bread of life with you? Why are you worried about the stuff you're worried about when you worship the God of this world? Why are we worried about the things of this world when we worship the God who made this world? How long are we going to forget? How long are our hearts going to be hardened? What kind of signs do we need? How many times has Jesus wet your sheep? Amen. For those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, the story of Gideon laid the fleece out, wet the fleece, laid the fleece out, dry the fleece. Some of us need that flipping sheep drowned before we believe he's wet. How many times does God have to prove to us that he is who he says he is. If God doesn't change my mind, one of the services that I'm going to be preaching in Michigan is before you can prove God to others, you have to have God proven to yourself. How are we going to tell everybody else that we believe God is, is everything he says he is if we don't believe it for ourselves? How are we going to tell somebody else that God can meet their needs if we don't believe he can meet our needs? Jesus says, what are you so worried about? You forgot your lunch. I am the lunch. Why are you so worried about the light bill when I created light? Why are you so worried about a car payment when I created the cars? Or the natural fuel that powers the cars. We'll go back into a science lesson if you need it. Fossil fuels and all that stuff they're trying to ban. I'm, I'm, I'm just ready to stay away from it. Leave it alone. Just because wind turbines need all them gallons of oil to run, I'm going to just leave it alone. Not going to get on a political thing this morning. The one thing I can say for them is there is going to be global warming. There is going to be global warming. They are absolutely right about it. God says this place is going to burn up with a fervent heat. It's coming. And nothing Biden or anybody else can do to stop it. Yeah. And cows pooping ain't going to cause it to get any worse. 
I tell you what you do. I know, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I got to. I got time. You lock yourself in a garage with a car. I'll lock myself in a garage with a cow. And we'll see which one of us can talk about it the next morning. But God, Jesus is... Jesus is... Why does just generation seek after a sign? How many, and, and, and I believe, in, in, in paraphrasing, and I do a lot of that, I believe he asked his disciples, how many more signs do you need? I asked us this morning, how many more times has God got to come through for us before we believe he does? A lot, but at least you're honest. How, how, how many times does God need to show me he can take care of my needs without me having to worry about it? Excuse me. How many times does God need to prove himself to me? Elijah, one of my heroes. And like I said, maybe nobody in Michigan is going to watch this. But he proved to Elijah by the brook with the ravens coming and feeding him every day. He proved to Elijah by the widow's barrel that he could take care of him. Every day. He proved to Elijah by the boy that he could take care of him every day. And then up on Carmel, he proved to Elijah by the bullock that he could take care of him every day. And finally, the people said, The Lord, he is God. But at the big brook, Elijah had to be proved to that he is God. Before you can prove to the world that he is God, you have to prove him to yourself. And if we spend all of our time worrying about stuff, have we really proven to ourselves? Do we really believe the signs that we've seen? Jesus said, have you, have you, are you so quick to forget? Are you so quick to forget the answers to prayers? Are you so quick to forget the job you provided? Are you so quick to forget the, the home that he's provided? The vehicle that he's provided? The health that he's provided? The healing that he's provided? The groceries that he's provided? The sanity that he's provided? Are you so quick to forget how many prayers he's answered for you just this year, not including your lifetime? He says, how much more proof do you need? You're worried about a sandwich when I'm the bread of life. And, and, and and verse number 21, and he said unto them, how is it that you still don't understand? I've been preaching for 29 years, maybe a little bit more. I have seen God do some miraculous things. Mm -hmm. In the 29 years I've been preaching. I have seen God do amazing things in my life. In transforming this sinner. Yeah. I have seen God do amazing things in transforming the lives of people around me. Yeah. I've seen God heal people. I've seen God put groceries on people's tables. Yeah. I've seen God put fuel in people's cars. Yeah. I'm talking to Ty this morning about maybe he was praying for gas money. God skipped the money part and just gave him gas. Yeah. You know, God doesn't need the bread to make a sandwich. God, how long, how is it that we still don't understand? We get all frustrated because of things going on in our life. And God says, what is life? It's more than raiment. It's more than food. Why reason ye because you have no bread? Perceive you not yet? Neither understand? Have ye your heart yet heart? After all of we've gone through, after all we've seen, are you still? My dad, I think it was my dad used to ask me, are you still so thick-headed? <laughs> are you still so hard-headed? Well, it's genetic, by the way, Dad. <laughs> But it, it, Jesus, Jesus 
Jesus says, what do you mean? Don't you remember the 12 baskets fulls left over with nobody to eat them? Don't you remember the seven baskets full left over with nobody to eat them? Everybody was full, and you're worried about a sandwich? You're worried about a piece of bread. It's like Rose at family dinner time. She'll buy the IGA to make sure everybody's got enough to eat. And then we have enough leftovers to feed half of the county. We can have a homeless kitchen out our front door. <laughs> enough food over there for all of Bighorn County. Thank God for it. There was a time when there wasn't no food in there. Yeah. There was a time when the rats come in with their help me sign. I, I appreciate God's goodness. Amen. And I don't worry about food no more. Probably because I don't need them. But I know God is going to provide. What is that? Uh, what, what, one of them country saying is a country boy can't survive. Doc give me the ability to shoot, and I got a two-eyed dog. You know, he don't got a one-eyed dog. If I get hungry, I'll go shoot something. I'll go catch something. I'll go grow something. I mean, there's enough deer on on the highway that gets killed every day to feed me for a month. Yeah, that's roadkill. That's nasty. I ain't no roadkill. You will get hungry enough. <laughs> You'll scrape it off and lick your lips when it happens. I'll trust you on that. <laughs> Just thump them little worms off to the side. You'll be all right. <laughs> but, 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 but you see how silly it is? I can't remember the guy's name. I told the kids in Sunday school this morning, but there was a guy that ran an orphanage. And they didn't have any food. And they were praying one morning for their daily bread. And they, they didn't have no food in the house. They set the tables. They put out all the silverware and stuff, but they didn't have nothing to put on the plate. But they started praying. And about that time, a knock come on the door. The bread truck had broke down right in front of the orphanage. I can't remember the names right now of the people that it happened to, but, but their, their provision was taken care of. There's been times when Rose and I, went right after, for the first 10 years after we got here, we didn't know exactly where the next meal was coming from. And God always provided. A cow truck flipped over out here in the middle of the highway. The sheriff's department called me and said, you need a cow? Well, just having so much that I do. I'd wake up in the morning, one of my tribal friends had left a deer laying on the doorstep. God always provided. We've never gone hungry. God always provided. This church has never missed a payment. On a light bill, a water bill, a, a, a building payment, God has always provided. Why do we worry so much? Why do we doubt so much? Why do we get so overly concerned about stuff? God says, are you, are you, how is it you still don't understand? There's people that will be listening to this today or tomorrow or whenever that are going to be worried about something. How is it that you still don't understand? God loves you. God's going to take care of you. You may not know the answer to how he's going to take care of you. The disciples forgot to pack a sandwich. And there ain't no bread out on the sea. And they'd already been to the other side, so there probably won't be none left on the other side. But Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Take no thought for what you put on. Take no thought for what you... Did not the birds, you know? Solomon in all of his glory wasn't arrayed like one of the flowers of the field, but we're going to worry? I think we just like to worry. I think, if we, I think if we didn't worry, we'd just get bored. Can you imagine a day without worry? Just just go through your life. Just God's going to take care of whatever situation I'm frustrated about. I don't need to worry about it. It's, it's God's deal. My job is God. God gave me a job. He'd give me another one. God gave me a wife. He'd give me another one. God gave me a child. He'd give me another one. My dad used to tell me that all the time. He said, I brought you into this world. I'm taking you, take you out of this world. I have another one look just like you. No, you can't have another one look like this. <laughs> you might have another one, but it won't look like this. And the world is happy about that. But but we, we spend we spend a lot of our waking hours worried about things we can't do anything about. And Jesus says, I mean, I, I like the way Jesus phrases it there. How is it that you still don't understand? And I and I can hear him asking me. As good as I've been to you, as many times as you were driving through the mountains with your ordinary light coming on and your lights going dim, as many times as the wires were coming through your tires but they didn't go flat, 
As many times as you didn't know where the groceries were coming from, and they miraculously showed up. As many times as the kids were sick, and now they're full-blown adults, having babies of their own. By the way, y'all, I got a brand new grandbaby here this morning. Yes, congratulations to me. I didn't have nothing to do with it, but congratulations to me. That is a but, but as many times, as many miracles as I've seen God work in my life, you cannot convince me that God ain't real. You cannot convince me that God doesn't love me. And my whole world may fall apart tomorrow. I pray that it doesn't. But I have seen enough to know that God's got it under control. And you young folks, you put him first. And he'll take care of you. You don't? <laughs> You're on your own, Scotty. Us adults, that we're always worried about stuff. Luke got a brand new baby. And the bigger that thing gets, the more it's going to eat. And the more you I'm just going to have to hunt more. There you go. <laughs> and it's going to need more diapers, and it's going to need more shoes, and it's going to need school, and it's going to need all this stuff. And if you're any kind of dad at all, you're going to try to plan for it. But don't worry about it. Because before you were Zeke's daddy, he was. And if you raise him right, one of these days he'll recognize that. And he'll trust him as his Savior. Some of you got robbed this past week. God will provide it. It's aggravating. Sure it is. You want to catch that thief and rub, twist his head to those eyes. Oh, Lord Jesus, I understand. God will take care of you. But God's going to give you back more than the canker worm stole. Yes. He tells us that in the Old Testament. He said he's going to give you back more than what the devil stole from you. Some of you worry about jobs and health and money and all kinds of stuff. None of that stuff means anything to God. Oh, he pacifies us with it because it's important to us. <clears throat> but he said, having eyes you hear not or see not, having ears you hear not, do you not remember? I don't know the title for that. Don't forget to remember. Pharisees are always looking for a sign, but you Christians don't forget to remember. Yeah. And I'll just close with that. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for your multitude of blessings. God, I pray that something that's been said this morning will remind us you are what you say you are. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Mm -hmm.